So my name is Gary Allenby, I'm the Chief Science Field Officer of Media Bioscience. And um, we've had a number of inquiries about the technology that we've got in the lab for high throughput Western blotting. Um, two instruments in particular that are in our labs, one is called WES and the other one is called JESS. And basically I'm going to speak about JESS today, um, but uh, most, of the, most of what I'm going to talk about also applies to WES as well. So this is the box um, from a company called Protein Simple, called JESS. And it comes with a number of consumables that you utilize in order to do high throughput Western blotting. Okay, so these are the consumables that you order and get in the box. So there's two components really. This component uh, and a microtiter plate which has a specialized configuration of wells. Um, when the microtiter plate first arrives, um, the setup looks like this. So it's covered in silver foil and basically you remove the silver foil um, at different points in order to put different reagents in it. Also, Protein Simple provides some reagents actually contained within the plate. Um, inside, inside the box, um, there is actually a location um, for the microplate. So the microplate would go here, like so. And the um, disposable cartridge um, would actually fit in like so and then what happens then is that this head travels across um, the microplate and the microplate travels into the instrument and basically aspirating from different locations so we look at that in a bit more detail by taking these two out so what we have here are actually 25 um, glass tubes very narrow bore glass tubes Right. And these are actually uh, what we utilize rather than the nitrocellulose membrane in order to be able to do the uh, separation of the protein. And this has a particular configuration, if you can see, of wells. And what we do is we put our proteins, so our sample lysates, go into um, the first column. And then in the second column, we'll put into there our um, primary antibodies, the third column, secondary antibodies the luminol, etc. Yeah? And then as I said, what then happens is the instrument comes along and it first of all will aspirate um, solutions that will then create a almost like a column inside each one of these glass uh, capillaries. Um, and then what it will do is it will aspirate your sample, so it will aspirate your, your cell lysate. And then what it will do is it will then um, it will then run it in, in a way such that it begins to separate your proteins um, as it goes uh, up the column um, and then once it's separated those proteins what it then does is it then washes away it then treats um, the glass uh, capillary with UV light in order to fix your protein onto the inside of the capillary then what it will do is it will then wash away the, uh, the gel inside the capillary then it will go and aspirate the primary antibody, then it will aspirate and wash, then it will aspirate the secondary antibody and wash, and then it will go and aspirate the luminol, and then basically you will then end up with a chemiluminescent signal, um, which is in each one of these uh, lanes. Um, and that chemiluminescent signal is then picked up by the camera inside the instrument. So it takes about three hours for a West to run or a Jess to run. Um, and then what we have is, is the runtime images. Okay, so uh, if we have a look at an um, animation, um, which actually is a small movie that represents the samples uh, traveling down the glass, glass rods, what you can see here are actually um, the samples uh, for Essen. And then as we um, take the movie backwards in time, so to speak, what you can see is then moving back up the glass rods. So if we start at time zero, we're basically here, and then as time goes by, as the run goes by, which takes approximately three hours, then you can see the proteins in each one of these 25 glass rods progressing as the run continues, yeah, until the run eventually ends at this point here. If we then, if we then go from the runtime summary to the actual assay and then the analysis, um, what we can actually do is we can then um, put on the different um, samples here as I go across 
and then you can start to see in what I would call the traditional mode um, what each of these looks like from the point of view of chemiluminescent signal from each one of the lanes. So I'm just putting all the lanes on and there we have all the lanes. So you can see in this case we are looking at a number of proteins, number of antibodies. We've um, mixed these together um, in order to identify different proteins within each lane. Yeah? Um, and so this is, this is the more traditional view of, of, the, uh, of the samples. And if we then look in what I would call a graphical view, um, actually then what happens is that you can see that we end up with a sort of histogram looking appearance. Now if we just focus on just one of these, um, what you can see here is basically on the x-axis is molecular weight and on the y-axis is chemiluminescence. And the number up here represents the uh, apparent molecular weight of, of that particular protein according to um, effectively um, this lane over here. Yeah? Um, and so in graph mode it looks like this and we can either say the peak height and take the peak height as an idea of how much protein we have or alternatively we can do area and the curve. Um, now if we were to take a number of these, yeah, um, the interesting thing is that what we can do in terms of lane view on the uh, well, Jess in comparison with the West is that we can look at not only chemiluminescence but we can also utilize antibodies in order to pick up um, fluorescently labeled antibodies in order to pick up a fluorescent signal. Um, so what you can see here in the black are actually a uh, chemiluminescent signal and the red represents a near infrared signal utilizing that antibody. What this means is that you can look at uh, proteins that run at approximately the same molecular weight by having either just that signal switched on, which is the infrared signal, in which case you can see the proteins here, or alternatively, the chemiluminescence signal, in which case you can see the proteins here, or you can look at both of them at the same time. And you can see these two proteins are very close to one another and would probably be not be able to separate if it wasn't for using these two technologies. Okay, so um, with regard to Wes or Jess, um, the first thing to remember is that all the lanes have controls within them. So every lane that runs a protein of interest also contains standards, standard molecular weight markers. These are fluorescently labelled and what this means is that the instrument utilises those markers in each lane to decide where that particular molecular weight lies and compares and contrasts it to your protein of interest. So if we look at our analysis and we go to um, standards then what we should be able to see as we put on our samples is in fact where the computer has identified where those are yeah and so the computer has basically identified these standards yeah and so if we look at those in terms of a graph view you'll see that they all appear in certain locations um, on each one of the glass rods and it's basically utilizing the where these appear, right, in order to compare and contrast those with your samples of interest.